Instead of submitting to God, we rebel against God, and this leads to discord and destruction, both for the believer and for the church. When we go our own way, pride gets in the way, and we can't expect God to bless us or give us anything when we don't do it his way. This was the original sin all the way back in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, Satan says, For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. I don't know about you, but every time I, I read that in uh, any time that Satan's talking, I just picture Shere Khan uh, out of uh, the Jungle Book, that's a little snake, and just there he's enticing and tempting us. See, that's a problem, that pride tells us that we don't need God, that we don't need anybody. We can handle things on our own. We don't need any help. We don't want to hand out. We don't need a help up. We want to be our own man and do it our way. We like to ball up our hands into fists and make things happen ourselves. That's why we've got to have that break and have that uh, heart surgery that we've been talking about the past couple of weeks so that we can resist the devil and he will flee from us and draw near to God and he will draw near to us. We must remember church, that our fight against the desires of the flesh and the temptations of the world is a difficult one, an ongoing one, a lifelong one. But more importantly, we should always remember that Satan isn't invincible. Jesus Christ has already destroyed him, has already crushed him by his death on the cross and his glorious resurrection. He is a defeated foe. We have the ultimate victory because we are in Christ. Those who proudly go their own way must not expect God to do anything for them. But those who humbly receive Christ will receive more than they expect. When we are humble and realize that we cannot find peace or salvation on our own and we come not with our own wisdom, our own intellect, our own strength, our own cunning, will end up back at the start of verse 7, and we will submit ourselves to God. And that is what changes everything. True freedom, spiritual freedom, comes when we submit to God. Freedom from de desperation, freedom from not being able to find what we are looking for. When we move closer to God, when we submit ourselves to God, God will give us everything we need and much, much more. When we trust God to move closer to us, when we move closer to Him, when we trust God to give us peace, He will fill our empty hands with His grace that's found in Jesus Christ. Notice it says that if we draw near to him, then he will draw near to us. We have to make the effort. We have to move first. To receive this grace of peace, we must not be proud, but repentant. We must be humble. That's why James urges his readers that he was originally writing to, the believers in Jerusalem and throughout the dispersion, but also to us here today, that we need to wash our hands and purify ourselves, to repent of our sins, to not be double-minded, and to be humble before the Lord. If our pride demands that we exalt ourselves, we will become humiliated. 
Proverbs tells us pride goes before the fall and great 